Josh was working at Paxton Gate, a retail store here in, um, in the Mission District, and I was a customer. And I was making an art project at the time, and I needed some moths, and somebody told me to ask for the bug guy. And so Josh was the bug guy at the time. And so that's how we met. Yeah, we didn't have live moths, but I, I I just remember trying to talk to you and not make it so you didn't so you wouldn't leave. <laughs> so I was like, oh, she's cute. She's she's smart and cute. I remember, I think the moment that I fell in love with him was at Dolores Park um, after work one day, and we were drinking a beer out of brown paper bags, sitting on the on the slope, and he went from left to right and panned across the cityscape and told me what the city looked like. 10,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, and, and, and in a way that was accessible and, and I could visualize it and it was just beautiful. We were very simpatico in a lot of good ways and I think we were also simpatico in, in some of our darker sides too. We both, you know, kind of fell down a big rabbit hole with drugs and alcohol in the city. and almost killed us. We started our recovery process with a kind of an explicit, you know, agreement, like a conditional thing. We have to be sober in order to be together. I was 90 pounds when I checked into rehab. Um, Josh and I were rationing a hot dog and a tortilla between the two of us to eat every day. And we had a cat that we were trying to feed too. I was just three months sober when I got pregnant. So I think that it was kind of exhilarating because it was like we kind of like beat the devil. All right, what's yeah. po what's possible? Like it was hard, but it didn't it didn't ever feel like we were doomed or anything. I look back at this now, and I think that if I was witnessing in somebody else's shoes, like us, then I'd be so afraid for us. You know. <laughs> Yeah. I think people around us must have just been so scared for us having a kid and, you know, sure. so close to being sober. Pretty sure it was Josh that came up with the idea of sharpening knives from the neighborhood. And so I just did an, a little pamphlet, knife sharpening. We put it up around until somebody started calling us. And then I would take Charlie around the neighborhood and with the stroller and people would give me their their rolled up knives and I'd put them in the little netting underneath the stroller. It was like a, kind of a little modern John Steinbeck thing. <laughs> Josh was going to the flea market and he was getting all these old knives and then he would spend hours at night after everybody's gone to bed looking things up, trying to research things, finding books to help him figure out what year something was made because you can get more money for something if you know about it and so he was selling on ebay he would have the stroller piled with post office box stuff where i got any machinery when i did it all by hand i like i added up my time and what i charged once and it was like three dollars an hour it, it was it was very little we were always stressed about money though and that didn't stop for a long ass time i mean i, I guess real, real recently, did actually. it stop <laughs> i mean not really no, but we, we have food in the we have food in the refrigerator yeah. it's a big deal We um, learned about a little store that sold vintage kitchen stuff closing on Guerrero Street. So when we moved into the Guerrero store, it was like our first, you know, kind of standalone, like, place where we had the keys and it was, you know, it was our space. We went from 90 square feet to 400 square feet to here. What is it, 1,300 square feet? I think so. There's 13 people on our payroll right now, which completely blows my mind all the time. We have a, you know, three kids and you know, we have a lot of life, you know, going on. For every person that you see on the streets of San Francisco that is suffering, drug addict, there's 10 of me. There, there's a lot of voices that want to trash on, on uh, San Francisco and talk about the poop in the street and all that. And, and I think that there is another side of what this place has decided to do for people. But I think that those efforts have helped tons of people, and us included. There was at one point a revolving 
door loan program working that is now that was through the city. Um, that's now a nonprofit. It's called Working Solutions. You can borrow twenty five or up to fifty thousand, but in the duration of you paying back that loan with them, they offer you all kinds of you know, services and, and support and help. We took advantage of a lot of that. And so we were able to hire our first employee who was actually through the Jobs Now program, who was a single mom. Um, and we were able to pay her a full-time salary um, that was re that, that actually was paid through the Jobs Now program. And so she set up all of our books for us and, and, and really got us, you know, up on a particular platform we were able to operate as a small business and just kind of educated us in all the different nuts and bolts. My name's Kelly Kozak and this is Bernal Cutlery, 766 Valencia Street. I'm Josh Donald, this is Bernal Cutlery and you've been hearing some orders being delivered to us. You've been hearing sharpening, some Japanese grinders going. There's the hand stones and then there's our crew.